In Ronald Radish's essay in the Daily Beast last August, recurring his conversation with Steve Bannon shortly after Bannon became CEO of Trump's presidential campaign, he wrote, Then we had a long talk about his approach to politics. He never called himself a populist or an American nationalist, as so many think of him today. Quote, I'm a Leninist, Bannon proudly proclaimed. Shocked, I asked him what he meant. Lenin, he answered, wanted to destroy the state, and that's my goal too. I want to bring everything crashing down and destroy all of today's establishment. Well, as recently as February 23rd at the Conservative Political Action Conference, Bannon declared the top three priorities of this administration, one of which is, quote, deconstruction of the administrative state, close quotes. Perhaps you have significant dissatisfaction with today's establishment, the administrative state. I surely do. But do you really want to bring it all crashing down? Apparently, Steve Bannon does. Whatever Bannon's reasons for his desire for national anarchy and chaos, no matter his rationale for destroying the American firmament, if Bannon has his way, a lot of people are going to get hurt, and I don't mean the gold-plated set. I mean ordinary Americans for whom their country will no longer work, and you just might be one of those people. Here's the scary part. Bannon has the president's ear in everything, including national security and nuclear weapons. Consider that the president has a loose affiliation with facts and reality and has demonstrated with his Muslim ban executive order that he has a ready, fire, aim mentality. Plus, he has the unique ability to contradict himself three times in a single sentence. So it's not at all clear if he has any firm convictions. And Steve Burn It Down Bannon has this malleable fact president's ear on all issues. What could possibly go wrong? If your goal were to destroy all of today's establishment, your first steps would be to take power away from whatever might challenge you. That is to say, you'd want to undermine public confidence in the very establishment you want to destroy. So, for example, you might attack our intelligence communities by comparing them to Nazis. That way, when the CIA, FBI, and NSA present incontrovertible proof of Trump conspiring with the Russians to hack and steal the election, Americans won't believe them. Or you might, you would continuously vilify reporters, newspapers, and broadcast cable and online news organizations so that when their investigative journalists uncover the blackmail that Putin has on Trump, people won't believe the actual reality-based facts those organizations bring to them. You would have your attorney general attack freedom of the press by subpoenaing a journalist who simply reported on the Bundy case for the NPR. And you would work to delegitimize the courts and our judges by attacking Judge Gonzalo Curiel and by calling Judge James Robart a so-called judge and blaming any future terrorist attacks in the U.S. on Robart. Likely, you'd also attack the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth District with the threat of, see you in court, which arguably is a dumb thing to say since the Court of Appeals is a court. Plus, Trump had already lost his case. Nevertheless, the drumbeat of attacking and undermining our institutions goes on. I've speculated in these essays about what Trump really wants and more than once have suggested that Trump is looking for an excuse to declare martial law much the way George W. Bush came to the White House looking for an excuse to evade Iraq. I have supposed that Trump's true objective has been to make himself a de facto dictator. That may be accurate, but what is hiding in plain sight is that Trump and the evil angel constantly whispering into his ear want to bring America crashing down. They are engineering revolution that will kill our democracy. I'm Jack Altshuler.